let me start the session and i'm going to share the screen so we'll start with a very basic because in this training program uh, some experience and even some beginners also so we de we designed this training program right from the basic to advanced okay so we'll start with the very basic i will start with the course title okay so uh, i think you already aware of this the title of the course is uh, plumbing and firefighting designing right myself uh, sm ali i'll take care for the firefighting system designing and uh, so if you talk about this firefighting so we'll deal with the firefighting system designing and for beginners uh, don't get confused uh, we are not talking about we are not talking about fire and safety fire and safety is different and that is related to hsc health and safety engineer we are talking about firefighting system designing and generally this firefighting system designing will take care by the mechanical uh, engineers even electrical people or even civil people are in also involved in this but basically this service belongs to mechanical side so we are not dealing with the hsc we are not dealing with the fire and safety we are dealing with the firefighting system designing system designing and uh, like sprinkler system like standby system like co2 system we have a list of system i'll i'll give you the idea about the system tonight in this uh, introduction session hmm. so the first point we are talking about system designing firefighting system designing okay not the fire and safety fire and safety that is a different uh, site okay and uh, second point uh, we are not dealing with the component designing we are dealing with the system designing okay because as a mechanical or as an engineer you know hmm, uh, component designing and system designing component designing means for example if you design a sprinkler a, a device or as a mechanical or as electrical any component if you're designing any component like a connecting rod a piston etc that comes under component designing but here in this building services we are not talking about component designing we are dealing with the system designing in the system we are going to select the different components okay especially for beginners experience people already aware of this but if you are a beginner this information for you so let me uh, open one presentation on screen this will help you to get the idea about this uh, syllabus and the introduction part for this firefighting system designing today is just an inter introduction session uh, i'll give you the idea what i'm going to cover in this training program what are the different systems and what are the different modules okay but before starting uh do you aware of nfp online nfpa yes sir i uh, see nfpa is nothing but national, national fire protection association right national fire protection association. association and it's a society we are living in a modern world right and in the modern world we are supposed to use the information which is already available from the society uh from the authorities from the AHJ, especially in firefighting, we used to call the authority called AHJ, authority having jurisdiction. We'll discuss more about this. We already have the ready-made course and standard, and you are supposed to use that course and standard from that society or from the authority, so that your design will get the approval. Because based on the previous research, we have a lot of information. and based on that we prepared the course and standard so you must follow and if you not follow this course and standard which is approved by your local authority your design will not accept especially in the case of fire fighting even for some other other services also in some some countries uh, approval is required even for other services but specifically for the fire fighting approval is required from the local body and the local body or the local authority we used to call ahj as per the nfp terminology ahj authority having jurisdiction so nfp is a society deals with the research and development for this fire fighting system site and in this training program we are following nfp standards because it is not possible to follow the society or the course of all the countries for example if you are working in india you are supposed to follow nbc if you are in uae you are supposed to follow their local standards so it is not at all possible in this training program to follow you are miss all the locations uh, course hmm. so we are following the international course and we'll focus more on the concept and if you when you learn the concept you can able to customize or you can able to use your own local authority course 
okay so focus more on the cause uh, more on the concept so that as per your local authority course you can able to use that course for example if you follow nfpa the distance between sprinkler to sprinkler for light hazard if you're not getting this terminology don't worry just try to focus on the point for example if you are using nfpa for light hazard <coughs> the distance between the sprinkler can be up to 4.6 meter but as per your local authority they will not allow for example more than say 3 meters so these numbers will vary but the concept is going to be same hmm, getting a point so focus more on the concept and uh, with the international standard nfpa okay so i think you got the idea is online yeah yes sir next yes yes so so here on screen you see the standards nfpa they have given over of this if you if not this is a major society deals with the research and development for this fire fighting side not only for the building even for the safety for other sites like aircraft marine etc they are offering n number of modules and we are not following all the modules from nfpa we'll follow the modules related to the building safety what are those modules you'll find in the next slide next we have ifc uh, international fire codes next ibc is a international building code actually ibc is not specifically for the fire fighting ibc the name will give you idea it's it's for building code ibc offer the codes for other services including the architectural structure also but will use ibc for fire fighting service because as per the course title so we'll follow chapter 3 and chapter 9 in ibc chapter 3 to get the types of building which is common and chapter 9 in ibc specifically for fire fighting system so this ibc will help you to get the idea about the system now ibc so ibc is not for the designing for fire fighting system this is to get the to get the information which system is applicable as per the type of building and the type of building architects know the type of building so we'll get in chapter 3 we'll get the types of building and why the need of getting the type of building so that using chapter 9 in ibc we can find out which system is applicable i'll give you the, we have a separate topic for this just i'm giving the idea so using ibc for example whether sprinkler system is required or not for that particular particular type of building that decision that information you can get from ibc or else we have nfpa 101 also for this information but as per the syllabus i am going to use ibc but anyhow if you want you can use nfpa 101 also which is basically for the architectural side next if you are in india we have fsai or you can also add nbc if you are in india national building codes okay or you can find out the societies or the local authority as per your location too okay next the listing and approval authorities uh, why the need of the listing and approvals this is specifically for the equipments for example uh, in a sprinkler system we are supposed to use the pump and pump is one of the major equipment in the sprinkler system so you cannot directly purchase the pump which is from the from the vendor it should be approved with the authorities for that we have this ul ul is a underwriter laboratory specifically uh, for the materials for the approval we'll discuss more about this at this level remember ul is a is a listing and approval authority for the equipments okay and the short is a ul is a underwriter laboratory similarly we have fm global is a insurance company and this society again deals or for the approvals for the listing for the especially for the equipment we'll discuss more about this at this level just remember these terms next ibc we already discuss we have a separate topic for this next do you know the difference between codes and standard online codes and standards i'll give you the idea standards means like nbc we can consider like a standard but code means which is mandatory and required to use in the project and for example in your project suppose your local authority accepting nfpa uh, nfpa in that case nfpa will become code getting a point hmm. so standard means we can say general general standard like N, like nfpa nbc etc but if you are using that directly nfpa in your project so that nfpa will become code so codes are mandatory getting a point next term is a aj hmm. is a authority having jurisdiction nothing but your local authority for example if you are designing a project for the location say 
in UAE or in say in Dubai. So you must take the approval from your local authority, right? Not from NFP. That local authority we can call as AHJ. So remember, whenever I use the term AHJ, it refers to your local authority from whom you're going to take the approval of your project design. And later they are responsible to inspect even on site also. Any point. Next, this is important. May I ask in interview modules. As I said, NFP is offering n number of modules. And we are not following all the modules. We are following the modules for the building safety because this course is designed for what? Firefighting system designing for what? For the building safety, right? Not for yeah. the aircraft, not for the marine. So the list of modules, what you can find on the screen is for the building safety. And what are the modules I'm going to cover in the syllabus? I'll give you the idea. And anyhow, you see all this model, which you can find on the screen, I'm going to cover the designing of that. I'll give you the idea. What are this NFP 10, 12, etc. So let me read this first. And if you want, you can make a note of this. Uh, if you already know, okay. If you don't know, you can make a note. NFP 10 is for portable fire extinguisher and portable fire extinguisher is a system i'll give you the idea in the next slide what if you are if you are a beginner if you don't know portable sting, fire extinguisher i'll i'll give you the idea uh, in this session so nfp 10 module is for portable fire extinguisher okay it's not lengthy this is a small topic next nfp 12 hmm, is for co2 sprinkler system or we can say, I can say CO2, CO, not exactly the sprinkler system, CO2 system. We can say sprinkler system in, in general, but technically it's a CO2 system. Or I can say uh, CO2 total flooding system or in short CO2 system at this level. Okay, we have again in CO2, we have uh, total flooding or a local application, different option. So NFPA 12 is for CO2 system. Okay, and again in NFPA 10, we have portable fire extinguisher in that also you'll find co2 i'm not talking about that we have a separate co2 system and for that separate module nfpa 12 okay next nfpa 13 very important and the major almost 60 percent of the syllabus or this uh, uh, in firefighting system will spend for this module nfpa 13 so lengthy and the, the major system nfpa 13 is for automated sprinkler system which is a major system in this training program and uh, a bit lengthy also in in the sprinkler system we are going to deal with the type of sprinkler type of sprinkler system especially the hydraulic calculation in manual and using the allied software etc so you can highlight this nfpa 13 and is for automated sprinkler system next nfpa 14 is for standpipe system standpipe system includes hose reel system landing valves internal landing valves class one class two class three system we'll discuss more about this at this level nfp 14 for standpipe system what is standpipe system one example is a hose reel and if you're a beginner if you don't know hose reel i'll show you some images in this same presentation tonight you'll get the idea next uh nfp 20 is for pumps for pump selection stationary pumps which is also an important topic. The hydraulic calculation, what we are going to deal in NFPA 13 and 14 for sprinkler and stand prep system for what? For the pump selection. Okay. So NFPA 20 is for pump. Next, NFPA 22 is for tanks because for this system, we require a tank to store the water. So as a mechanical, uh, your responsibility to find out the capacity of tank. The construction of tank and all will take care of this related to the civil scope but your role is to find out the capacity and uh, the attached the accessories the pipe accessories the connection like puddle flying etc that related to your side but the construction and all will take care by or comes under civil scope next nfp 14 is for hydrants hmm. if you don't know hydrant i'll show you the image today don't worry next nfp 25 is for installation site installation part actually this in this training program we are offering the design the 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 main focus in the design only but partly installation also i'm going to cover so nfpa 25 is for installation next nfpa 72 is for alarm system alarm system means including these detectors okay fire alarm system this is also interesting and remember if you are electrical 
here in FPS 72, I'm not going to cover the electrical side of this alarm system because that comes in the electrical side. I'm going to cover uh, the mechanical scope of alarm system, like the placement of the detectors, the distance between the detectors, alarm location, but wiring in all comes under electrical low voltage side that will take care of electrical. That is not a part of this training program. So in NFP 72, uh, alarm, uh, this fire alarm system, I'm going to cover for mechanical scope. Okay. Next NFPA 92A is for smoke management, smoke management, uh, and in the smoke management as per the syllabus, I'm going to cover uh, staircase pressurization, which is required in case of fire to maintain the positive pressure to restrict the smoke. It's also one system. Next NFPA 2001 is for clean agent. Clean agent means uh, waterless system. The best uh, commonly used system in market is FM 200. A synthetic gas is a refrigerant used to control the fire. It's very effective at the same time, very expensive. Used only for special systems like data centers, record room, cash room, etc. Okay, so these are the modules I'm going to cover in this training program. Apart from this, for your information, NFP 101 is not in the syllabus, but if you have time, you can read once that also help you actually nfp 101 is, is, is generally for the architectural side uh, this will help you and nfp one uh 101 is a life safety code in general that is a general course in case of fire how to come out from the building as as a not as an engineer that nfp 101 will offer some general codes this also you can add but i'm not offering in the syllabus that is a additional you can read but i'll share you the pdf for this uh, module okay got the idea online